to go through. It took me a little longer to get through them today than usual. I don't know. Maybe it's because I had too many days off and it's like, all together. whoop, there um, we go. And then I've got my... And so let's do that video. Mr. Rob, Ms. Farrell, can you guys hear me? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, wonderful. All right, Mr. Rob, can you hear me? Oh, you're muted. I can, Your Honor. I believe Ms. Farrell is covering first appearances and I will be doing uh, 24s today along with Mr. Stewart on one case. Okay, sounds good. Um, I received word that Cesar Mastraz Mastraza has bonded, so we'll hand that one over to the clerk. And then um, I understand we're gonna start uh, today with Mr. Leitner. Mr. Leitner, good afternoon, sirs. We find your information. All right, Mr. Leitner, court has reviewed your booking information, does find that there is probable cause uh, you have two counts of being a fugitive from justice out of Pinellas County. Those two counts were set by another judge at $1,000 each. So those will remain the order of the court. Um, and on the uh, DUI with damage to person or property, it will be a $2,000 bond. On the simple DUI, it'll be a $1,000 bond. And on uh, the leaving the scene of the accident with damage to person or pro with damage, uh, it will be a $1,000 bond. And um, on the no valid driver's license, the court is not finding probable cause. I couldn't find anywhere in the booking sheet uh, or anywhere to show that there was any information to suggest that this gentleman does not have a driver's license. So court will ROR on that one. Thank you. It doesn't have anything on that, Your Honor, you're correct. Okay, thank you. I, I read it like three times because I thought I had to have been missing something, but it wasn't there. I did as well. Okay. Sounds good. Oops, all of it came out of the, it all came out of the clip. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, next one we have is Giacomo Lucarelli, Mr. Lucarelli. Also, um, sir, uh, we also hear, hear Mr. Dominic Lucarelli. Good afternoon. He does. Did you hear that, uh, Attorney Rob? That's me, Your Honor, and I. I oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Farrell. Excuse me. Yes. It's okay. Yes, I'm aware of what Mr. Lucarelli was going to ask. I don't have any objection to that. Uh, any thoughts on that? No, Your Honor, he has no prior history. Okay, um, then the court will um, set the bond in this case at $500 or pretrial release. Um, the other provision would be that he could stay at his home, um, but that he would attend his, his meeting that he has tomorrow. Is that right? 1030, David Lawrence comes back. Tell me how you, what language is you, you're suggesting. I'm struggling a little bit. I'm sorry, so he's, he's got a point to see David Lawrence. He's going to evaluate it tomorrow morning at 10 30 at the Bathy Avenue office. Okay. And um, he gets, he'd be on, on house arrest if he's tonight until that evaluation takes place. Why would he need to be on house arrest if he's, in fact, released on bond? Yes, I'm just, I'm just trying, we're just trying to.
sure that he gets out today. Gets out today. Uh, he bond. should. He should be able to get out today if he posts the five hundred dollar bond or he signs up for pretrial release. Isn't that right? There's nothing holding him. No, I'm amenable to him being released today, um, especially in light of the fact that the family seems to have a plan to get him some help. Um, I'm also going to sign an order that he releases or he relinquish any and all firearms within 24 hours of his release. Um, in addition, there will be a no trespass at the Mercado, which is 9132 Strata Place, Naples, Florida. Uh, and also that there, gosh darn it, I can't write today, that there be no contact um, with the victim in this case, whose initials are NC. And they don't live together, right? Or do they? No. no? Okay, thank you. Thank you. You too. All right. The next uh, person would be Mr. Nemchek. Mr. Nemchek, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Oh, I know how old he is. There, one was born in 46 and one was born in like 44. They're both very close in age and they're married. Yeah, I read I read the information. So I'm, I'm aware that they're both over the age of 65. And the court does note that. Okay, thank you. Because usually when I see something like this, that's one of the first questions that I ask in my mind is how old is the, um, you know, is the defendant. So, um, all right, Mr. Nemchuk, the court has reviewed your booking information, does find that there is probable cause. The court is going to order that there will be no contact with Rose Nemchek, your wife. Um, I will allow you to um, travel to your residence one time in order to retrieve your personal belongings and things, as long as you do so within 72 hours of your release and also through the coordination with law enforcement. Um, in addition, um, sir, the court is ordering that there will be a no trespass at the address of 17, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I got it right, 13. 497 Monticello Boulevard, Naples, Florida. Uh, and also you will relinquish any and all firearms within 24 hours or within, yes, 24 hours of your release from jail. Um, and I am going to set your bond at $2,500. Thank you, sir. All right. And Next would be Mr. Petty, Joseph Petty. Hi there, sir. Um, okay. In your case, you have a violation of state probation and Judge Foster has signed a, an order that you be held no bond. That will continue to be the order of this court. And also to the charge of battery, the court will find that there is probable cause and will set your bond at $2,000. Um, and on the criminal mischief, the court will also set your bond at $2,000. Court is also entering a no contact order with Rose Mays. And also there will be a no trespass at 260 Benson Street, Naples, Florida. Yes, sir. Um, so the court will also enter an order that allows you to retrieve your personal belongings and things so long as you do so within 72 hours of your release um, and with the assistance of law enforcement. Also, the court is signing an order that you have to release any relinquish any and or all firearms within. Okay. Um, yes. I'm sorry, I have a different victim name on him. You do? Yes. Let me make, just make I'm sure I didn't write down the wrong name. It's very possible. It's the same initials. Uh, I think I, I think it's Rosalyn versus Rose. Is yeah, that right? Rosalyn Morse. Right. I wrote her name down wrong. Can't read my own handwriting sometime. Rosalyn Morse it is. Thank you. Sir, because I am signing an order that prevents you from having any contact with her, I'm also signing an order that's preventing you from going to the residence at this time. It may be at some future time, you could ask the court to issue an order that allows you to go back to the residence, but I'm not going to do that today. I will need testimony from her to indicate that fact. And, and um, if she comes in and she testifies that she doesn't live there, or you can um, provide some proof to the court that she doesn't live there, I may, um, 
um, reconsider my order. But as of right now, I don't have any information from the victim that she doesn't live there. And so at this time, the order will stand. Thank you. All right, and then um, we need to now switch over to 31B, right? Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. We ready to go? All right. How about Mr. Arroyo? Is he ready? I have some information that by statute I need to inform the court about on him. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Your Honor, he has an extensive history of domestic violence arrests. He's been arrested two previous times for domestic violence battery, two previous times for violation of injunction and has a prior battery conviction in 2002. Based on this, I'm asking for an enhanced bond on the battery of $5,000 and a GPS to monitor the no contact order, please. He will qualify as a felony battery. Okay. Uh, sir, does this individual speak Spanish? Because it indicates to me they speak English. Okay, thank you. That's what I thought. All right, thank you. So um, the state attorney's office is requesting a heightened bond based on the history, um, which she just put on the record. What's that? Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, well, sir, you'll have the opportunity to bring that information up when you have your trial or when we proceed to a different hearing. The purpose for this hearing is to set a bond and to set um, reasonable restrictions if necessary in order to secure your appearance in court and also to protect um, the alleged victim in this case, which is Hilda Hernandez. And so what the court is going to do is um, on the obstructing charge, the court will find that there's probable cause. Bond will be set at $2,000. On the battery, the court will find that there is probable cause and will set the bond at $5,000. The court is also going to order that there will be no contact with Hilda Hernandez. And again, it's like, um, again, that is something you could bring up to the court on a different date. If I had testimony from the alleged victim that she no longer lived there, the court may reconsider its order uh, not to allow you to go back to the residence. But at this time, the court is not going to allow you to go back to the residence at 271 Price Street. Um, but will allow you to go there to retrieve your um, personal hy hygiene items and belongings so long as it is done so done through the assistance of law enforcement and within uh, 72 hours of your release. Um, in addition, the court is signing an order directing that you have no firearms. You need to relinquish those within 24 hours of your release, sir. Okay. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. And then if you are in fact evict evicted from the re residence, then we won't have to address the issue of whether you can go back there. Um, well, are you ordering the GPS or are you- No, I'm not ordering the GPS, no, but thank you. The total bond is $7,000, sir. Thank you. Um, okay. Next, we have Mr. Bellier. Mr. Bellier? All right, sir. Let me find you. Oh, I think I put him at the end. I think I had Mr. Bellier at the end, but um, is he is he over there or no? Because I, I, I got him at the end for some reason. 
Okay. I just I just went down the order I had on the on the paperwork, but then I saw that he was um, actually at the end of the docket, so I apologize. All right, Mr. Vellier, um, the court has reviewed your booking information, does find that there's probable cause. Your bond is set at $2,000, sir. Thank you. For the possession of marijuana charge, sir. Oh, <clears throat> hold on a second. That's right. I forgot about that. Let me take a look at that, Tommy. Yes, sir. Um, sir, there is a writ of bodily attachment, which was issued for failing to pay child support. What, what that is, is that is actually a purge. So in other words, in order to get out of jail on that, you would have to pay a purge of $450. Are you able to, to pay that amount, sir, in order to get out? Because you've got a bond, but the child support is going to have to be paid separately in order to get out of jail. Otherwise, we'll have to set you for a hearing on the issue of whether um, there you would have be held in contempt and have sufficient funds to be, to be able to pay that. You're going to need to make arrangements with someone to pay that. You cannot post a bond on child support through a bondsman. It has to be the entire $450. Unlike a criminal charge where you can go see a bondsman and you can put up the with a with a bond of two thousand, you can put up the ten percent, the two hundred, and secure the rest with child support. It has to be paid in full, and if it is paid in full, then then you will have satisfied the writ that's holding you there. Otherwise, what we'll need to do, if you cannot do that, is I'm going to need to um, set this matter in front of um, the family court judge uh, in order to have the family court judge have a hearing on your behalf, but you will not be able to get out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do with this, um, and if, and just in case he doesn't pay it, um, is that we will move this over to uh, an 8:30 hearing docket tomorrow morning with Judge McPhee. That way, if he doesn't pay it, he'll, you know, and he doesn't get out on it, then we've got um, some means of having control over it. Because it, it I think Judge McPhee is the one who should really actually hear it. And actually, I forgot about that, or I would have actually contacted Judge McPhee and said, "Can I just handle the writ today?" And I would have done it, but I forgot. So. All right, uh, next we have Mr. Fariozzi. Good afternoon, Mr. Hopkins. Okay, let me just pull him back up. Yes. Your Honor, I would ask the court, and my question to Mr. Fariozzi, I would ask the court to set the submission of bond amount to a court. Uh, the reason for that, Your Honor, is you see in the probable cause affidavit, um, which was aggravated assault with deadly weapon without intent to kill. The deadly weapon for the probable cause affidavit was a machete. Right. And the allegation, Mr. Periazzi would have to have the apparent ability to carry out the threat. Um, so it's not to say that there may not be probable cause for an assault. Um, but what I'm basing that on, Your Honor, is based on the case of the LCC State, where victim is locked inside uh, excuse me, this would be 799, 2nd, 330, which is a fifth DCA case, 2001, where the victim was locked inside an apartment. The defendant at the time was outside of the apartment, exhibiting alleged threats at the time. The sole issue, uh, and the DCA said that a judgment of acquittal should have been granted as to the aggravated assault the deadly weapon is that there was no apparent ability to carry out the threat. So again, I recognize the probable cause affidavit details multiple incidences. I'm focusing just the argument solely as to the felony, the third degree felony at the time the machete was used. How it was used. Let me look at this again. And I, and I know you're reading, I guess the defense argument conversely Mr. Fariazzi was alleged to have gotten outside of his vehicle, but that was for a third party witness, not the alleged victim in the case. I realize that. Yeah, the difference I would make in my argument is that had Mr. Fariazzi gotten outside of his vehicle, approached the alleged victim with the machete at that point in time, factually, I would submit that that would be a different circumstance. 
Response from the state, Ms. Farrell or Mr. Stewart? That would be me, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, I think this is a very big difference from somebody outside a home to somebody inside a home where we're dealing with a vehicle that's directly behind her vehicle and the machete is being waved out the window with slashing motions. It's a reasonable person standard. I don't see any reasonable person who's not going to be placed in fear by that action. I don't think it's the issue of whether the person would be pl placed in fear. It's a question of whether there'd be the present ability to carry out the threat. Um, and the case that uh, Mr. Hopkins cites talks about, you know, the, the, the person being inside of the house when, they, when the threat is made. And he's arguing that it's similar to a person being inside of her car um, in that if the defendant would have stepped out of his vehicle uh, with the machete, that might have been different than him just simply waving it out of the window and them both being um, located within the, in the confines of their vehicles. Neither. Again, it's the same issue. I mean, there's a door between the two in the case that Mr. Hopkins is citing, and there's only an open window between the victim and the defendant in this case. Well, actually, there's there's two doors. There's a door to the defendant's car, and there's a door to the victim's car, um, and neither one of them out of their vehicles. At least that's not what it says in the uh, in the booking report, which may change things. But I'm agreeing with Mr. Hopkins. I will find probable cause on the misdemeanor. Uh, on and I will set the bond on this at 2500 um no on felony yes to misdemeanor and um also going to where is my notes that I just have I am going to order that he have no contact with HB and KW on this not that i think that he will but oh and i'm also uh, i'm going to sign an order um that he relinquished any and all firearms um within 24 hours it's a pretty disturbing fact pattern and i would suggest that maybe mr ferrazzi might need some anger management mm -hmm. two different people two different times i don't know what was going on with him that day and i'm not passing judgment on it when i when i read this it gave me some pause so, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Next would be um, to Mr. Jack Jackie Lucas. Juan. There he is. Uh, and I'm showing on here that he speaks Spanish. Is that correct? Sir, do you need the um, services of the Spanish speaking interpreter in order to understand what I am saying? You don't, okay. Then the court will not make a finding that he requires a Spanish speaking interpreter. Um, State, it wasn't clear to me what the address was when I was reading the booking report. It appeared there were several different addresses. Um, are you looking to have a no trespass at the at the victim's residence? Because I couldn't tell from reading it where exactly it was that she lived. I think, was this the one that was in the car? This is the one where there was, yeah, there was uh, multiple addresses listed and there was one, the allegation was that uh, um, she got into the car with, or, or she was forced into the car. Right, right, Your Honor. I'm looking to see if I have her address on the Vine form. Okay, um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I, on this one, I will find um, that there is probable cause as to all counts. And um, on the obstruction, it'll be a $5,000 bond. Um, on the aggravated assault, it will also be a $5,000 bond. And on the kidnapping, also a $5,000 bond. Um, and on the battery, a $2,000 bond. And the court is gonna order that there will be no contact with Noelia, N-O-E-L-I-A, Flores. I'm making the additional provision that there will be um, no trespass at the victim's residence. So if you know where she lives, sir, you can't go there. Also signing an order that any and all firearms will be relinquished within 24 hours from your release. Understand? Your Honor, she did not list the address on her vine, on the Vine form. 
I didn't see it, so that's why I just made an order that wherever she lives, you can't go there. It's all good? Very good. And no contact with her as well. All right, good. Thank you. All right, let's see here. Who's next? Um, that one bonded. How about Mr. William Rodriguez? Good afternoon, Mr. Rodriguez. Do you understand English, sir? No? And this is one where it says English, but in fact, I think he speaks Spanish. Is it Spanish that you speak, sir? Court will make a finding that this gentleman requires the services of the Spanish speaking interpreter. Court has reviewed the booking information, does find probable cause. To the charge of Novella driver's license, the court will impose a $250 bond. In addition, there's currently an immigration hold. In the event that you are convicted of this crime, your sentence could be reduced to facilitate your transport to the detention facility. Thank you. Gracias. Uh, next would be Charles Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Sure. Um, Your Honor, if we may ask the Madam to be interested in setting a, um, an offer for this case to resolve for five days. Ms. Farrell, um, Ms. Armbrister is asking whether you would consider making an offer to try to resolve this matter with this gentleman and uh, maybe scheduling it out for five days. And I'm just, I'm checking something. Your Honor, this is charged as a felony. This is charged as a felony. No, it's because the 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 allegation was trespassing um, at a place that um, is a, is a posted domestic violence center. Um, and in all honesty, um, when I reviewed the allegations contained within the booking sheet, and particularly some of the behaviors from the defendant, um, I was concerned that there might be some mental health issues, um, which. You know, sometimes when I read it, I, my biggest fear is that there's somebody who's um, has a, a wife or girlfriend or somebody there and is going there on purpose. My um, concern with this particular gentleman is at least from my reading of the booking sheet that he may perhaps be homeless and he may perhaps have some issues um, which are causing him some difficulties that we may want to look at maybe through um, having a mental health evaluation or somebody, you know, to, to talk with this gentleman in jail. But in any event, I did review the booking information. I do find that there is probable cause. Bond will be set at $5,000. There will also be a no trespass at the shelter for abused women, which address is confidential. You can't hear me, sir? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to try and explain to you what's going on. You want to give me a minute? You remember that you were arrested yesterday? Yes. The charge against you right now is that you trespassed on a place that's designated as a domestic violence facility. Okay. Well, you'll have the opportunity to discuss any defenses you may have with an attorney. Um, and if you don't, if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. So you may need an attorney, sir. And it looks like he's homeless. He may have some difficulty filling out the forms from what not only did I see in the book sheet, but from what I'm seeing right now. Okay. 
Yeah, Ms. Farrell, I'm, 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 I'm becoming increasingly concerned that this gentleman may have some mental health issues and perhaps even some competency, competency issues, um, which is something we definitely want to take a look at, folks, okay? For, for today's purposes, I've set your bond, sir, but we're going to see if we can get some people to come over to see you to see if we can get you some help, okay? Mr. Rogers, I'm, I'm, I work with the Public Defender's Office. I'm going to have some people come in and talk to you. Please speak with them, okay? Thank you. Okay. Um, how about Christian Rogowski? Yes, Mr. Rogowski, the court has reviewed your booking information and does find that there is probable cause. Um, on the high speed uh, fleeing and eluding, the bond will be set at 5,000. And on the DUI refusal, the bond will be set at 2,000. You also do qualify for pretrial release. So you could either post the bond or you could sign up for pretrial release, which would require you to do some tasks while you're out on bond um, that you'll have to perform. So you've got two options, pretrial release, or you can post the bond, okay? Yes, thank you. All right, next we have Michael Rogowski. Folks, I had a little bit of trouble with this one. I read the statute that he was charged with and I just don't see it. Your Honor, I have nothing to add. I agree with the court. Court is finding no probable cause will be released to ROR. Thank you, sir. Oops, I'll sign that one. And we have Mr. Sheard. Good afternoon, Mr. Sheard. Court has reviewed your booking information and does find that there is probable cause on the felony cocaine possession will be $5,000 and on the paraphernalia, it will be 2,000. Thank you. All right, and I think that's everybody. For some reason I didn't hand you this gentleman. Why didn't I do that? Oh, I know why. Okay. Sorry about that time, I missed this one. There we go. Okay, then we have some pleas. Um, oh, we also have one gentleman that was going to be brought back this afternoon, Mr. Welker. I did receive um, an order um, from the state attorney's office releasing him. Um, just to let everybody know, I did talk with Judge Adams and he's fine with me signing it. Judge, can we go over that with him before oh, is he, so he understands his obligations because there are obligations he has to undertake to remain out on, uh, on an ROR. Okay. Oh, okay. Sure, of course. Okay, so who do we have in the room that we're in right now that we have to please? Looks like we've got uh, Arroyo, Bellier, Rogowski, and Reed. Is that who's in this room? And everybody, you, you guys need me to step out a minute to talk with these individuals, is that right? I need to talk with you. As long as you don't mind me being here, otherwise I can, my, my office is right there, I could step out and come back. No? Okay. Right. All right. Well, let's, um, why don't we, since yours is all ready to go, Mr. Hollander, why don't we do yours first? Oh, he's in the other room. All right. So, okay. So let's um, address whoever we've got here in this room right now. We've got four individuals um, that are going to be pleading today, right? Is that Mr. Arroyo, Mr. Bellier, Mr. Rogowski, and Mr. Reed? Well, the weird thing is their names are also on for please, which is strange. Okay. All right, Mr. I don't know why it. Yeah. Yeah, it just for whatever reason they printed up on please too. So I thought maybe I had them. Maybe they were doing both. I don't know. All right, we're ready. All right, Sure, of course. Yep. Mr. Reed is Derek Bernardo. You're on the docket today to resolve your case. As you know, you have a hold to get out. You receive no contest today to the charge. There will be an adjudication of guilt. A. And court costs. You'll have some time to pay those. You're going to have to post bond on the other case, okay? I plead no contest. You're not going to go to trial. No one's forcing their plea. We're moving after careful consideration. We've talked the last few months over this case, all right? We've gone over the strengths and weaknesses of the case. I've done everything you've asked me to do in the case. No one's forcing you to enter this place, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You believe it's in your best interest? 
Yes, sir. All right, I know you're a U.S. citizen, so deportation is not going to apply. It's a first degree misdemeanor, which is punishable to a year in jail. You have no jail beyond today. You'll be out today. I'll contact me and let her know this case is resolved. All right? You understand, you understand that we're not going to have a trial in this case? I understand. Okay, and you're giving up all your rights related to a trial. I understand. Okay, do you have any other questions for me? I do not. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Judge. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> so we need to get him sworn in. He needs to come back. You're not done yet. <laughs> and so, okay, and I wasn't paying attention. Is it a plea to both charges or what? It's just one count of resisting without violence. Okay. And if is the state ready? Yes, we've got Mr. Rab. Are you handling this or Mr. Stewart? I am, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Rab's here. Okay. Sure. All right, sir. Um, can you please state your full name and your date of birth for your record? And sir, um, you are charged with resisting or obstructing an officer without violence. Um, do you understand that that charge carries with it a maximum penalty of up to one year in the county jail? And knowing that, how do you wish to plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Have you read and signed a plea form? Did you, have you read the plea form and have you signed it? Piece of paper that tells you all the rights you're giving up, sir. But you've read it, is that right? And do you, or do you intend to sign it today? Thank you. Do you understand all the rights that you will be giving up uh, by entering into this plea? Are you entering in this plea because you believe it's in your own best interest? Has anybody threatened you or made you any promises to get you to enter into this plea? And you've been represented by Mr. Verderamo. Are you satisfied with his advice? Are there any questions you have for Mr. Verderamo or for me before we uh, finish your plea? Are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medications? that would affect your ability to enter into this plea? Do you suffer from any mental illnesses? Do you understand that if you're not a United States citizen that this plea would likely be used against you in a deportation proceeding? Anything else I need to ask this gentleman, Mr. Rebb? Not from the state, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Verderamo, you stipulate to a factual basis and venue for the purpose of the plea? <laughs> And the court uh, does find that there is a factual basis for your plea and that venue is in Collier County. I will accept your plea, find that it's freely, knowing, knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily made and entered to the charge of resisting or obstructing an officer. Uh, the court will adjudicate you guilty and impose the court costs and the cost of prosecution. I will also give you uh, 30 days to pay. Oh, and I should have said without violence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You too. All right. Uh, looks good, Tommy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's the only one over there, right? So we can switch over. That's it, right? Just the one, right? Do we have someone else? Who else do you? Oh, yeah. Are you talking about Mr. Arroyo, Bellier, and Rogowski? So for some weird reason, they printed off not only on my sheet as being 24s, but also please, which was a little confusing to me, but I just think it was a mistake. So we're good. Yep. Thank you. All right, sounds good. See you tomorrow. All right, who are you here for today? Mr. Langton. Mr. Langton? Okay. Oh, she. She 
Okay. Why don't we call him up and then when she comes back, we'll take your case. Yes, he can complete. His only condition is a batter's intervention program. If he can find a comparable course in Tennessee or North Carolina, wherever he's going, he can do that, but that's going to be on him, and he's going to have to make sure he does that. Did you hear him, sir? Is that something that I can see you about? Yeah, I'm going to I mean, it's something that if you want to complete the program from Tennessee or North Carolina, the state saying that you can do that. I have not had the ability to go over this with you um, prior to because of holidays and technical difficulties given the pandemic. So if you want to try and complete diversion from out of state, we can we can do that now. And if I do that, I have no as soon as you successfully complete it, the state will know what's called a null pros. It's Latin for no prosecute. They file that document stating that they dropped your case. Okay, well, how would I find out that I can do that? The state just said that they didn't object. You'll have to find a comparable program to the batter's intervention in North Carolina. You could contact, um, there's there's plenty of places, and yes, I, I can help you try to find a comparable place, as I'm sure a diversion program here would help you as well. Right now. You can get out right now. Today. I can't help you with that, sir. Unfortunately, it's it's kind of a, you either want to accept it and do it now, or we can wait a little bit and then have our ducks in a row. I could set this later in the week. The other thing um, too, is that I'm looking at a no contact first appearance order, which I'm under, I believe would stay in effect until he completed state, everything. Is that right? No, the state put in their order that the no contact would be lifted. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I didn't see that. So sir, what, the, what uh, my understanding is the judge is, is that uh, if you sign up for the diversion and you're in the diversion, 
which would be um, taking the classes, which in Florida, what are they, 26 weeks of classes yeah. once a week? Uh, the no contact with your wife would be uh, lifted. So you could go back home to your wife, um, you work on your anger issues, and it sounds like they'll uh, dismiss your charges. I can reset this for another day this week if you think you might be able to schedule a, a call with him that's private so you can explain it to him. I can set it for Friday. I'm going to reset your case for Friday. I'll still be the judge on Friday afternoon, so it'll be going Friday at 2.15. And then that way, hopefully, you'll have sufficient time to talk with Ms. Arm Priester, and she can give you really an idea of, um, of what you're thinking. I, I can't do that because I'm the judge. Judge, if it's okay with Ms. Arm Priester, could we reset it for Thursday because I, I'll be here Thursday afternoon, and I prefer to be involved with this just because of the complexity of it. Okay, we'll set you, set you for Thursday, sir. Sure, that sounds good. All right, we'll see you Thursday. All right, thank you. All right, we have our um, our lady back. Why don't we take her next? Ms. Langton, this is case number 20MM1143. Lee Hollander on behalf of Ms. Langton. Uh, the agreed upon disposition was the adjudication of guilt. 45 days jail with credit time served. Um, she's been in constant. Were you in constantly or did you get out for a while? Um, I have two days in from my from the start. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, credit time served and uh, court costs and costs of prosecution. Okay. We need to get everybody um, who is over there today that's going to, and there's only two of them right there. Can we do, please get them sworn in? Please right here. And you too, sir. Thank you. Do you sign yeah. Firm that the testimony you shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And sir, you are Mr. Brown, is that right? All right, just making sure. I want to make sure we got them both sworn in. Yes, sir, Mr. Rabb. Yes, Your Honor. I uh, just wanted to state that for the record that the state does confirm the terms that Mr. Hollander read. Okay. Her initial arrest date is July 25th. Okay. And apparently she was in for two days and then got out and was subsequently arrested on some new felony cases, the one of which has been dropped. Um, other one is still sitting there, but she should have by now 45 days in. On November 30th uh, of 2020, there was an order revoking bond in this case. Um, so here we are, January the 4th, so she'd have like 34, 35 plus the two, 37. And with the credit they give them over there, she's got to be close, right? Yeah. Pretty close. So I'm not sure you're going to be out, you know, today or tomorrow, but it, it, from what I see, it looks like it's close because you were, um, it looks like your bond was revoked on November 30th in this case. Yeah. You may, of course. 1706 felony case for no, no file. So you still got bond imposed in 1749 if you want to, or you can sit there. We've already worked out a plea on misdemeanor in that case, and I got to get it set in front of Judge Manulich. So it could be another week or so. Okay. It, it, it could be. I'm just telling you, we've already worked out a plea in it. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. I was going to say, if you guys you guys have it worked out, you could always set it before me. I'm here every day this week. I don't have a problem with it. I know Judge Manuelich well enough that when I go, go to him and I say, do you want me to hear this? He says, use your best discretion every time. So I am more than happy to do a plea if everybody's on board with it, you know, if it's going to get her, if it's going to get her out. If it's not, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you guys work it out and it ends up getting her out this week, just call my office and we can set her for this right. afternoon. Not a problem. Um, okay, 
So ma'am, will you please state your full name and your date of birth for the record? And ma'am, you've been charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. Do you understand the maximum time you could spend in jail on that charge is a year in the county jail? And knowing that, how do you wish to plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Have you read and signed a plea form? And do you understand all the rights that you'll be giving up by entering into this plea? Are you entering into this plea because you believe it's in your best, best interest? Has anybody made any, any promises to you or threatened you in any way to get you to enter into this plea? And you've been represented by Mr. Hollander. Are you satisfied with his advice and counsel in this case? Do you have any questions for either him or for me before we proceed forward with your plea? And are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medications that would affect your ability to enter into this plea? Do you suffer from any mental illnesses? Do you understand that if you're not a United States citizen, that this plea would likely be used against you in a deportation proceeding? Yes. Any other questions we need to ask her, Mr. Rabb? Not from the state, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hollander, you stipulate to a factual basis and venue for the purpose of the plea? Thank you. So the court will find that there is venue in Collier County and that there is a factual basis for your plea. The court will accept your plea, find that it's freely, voluntarily, knowingly, and intelligently made. To the, to the charge of possession of drug paraphernalia, the court will adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 45 days in the Collier County Jail, credit for all time served, uh, court costs, uh, and the cost of prosecution. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hollander. Thank you, Judge. All right, we'll see you again. See you later. See you later this week. All right. All right, and that brings us to Marcel Brown. Now, did you say you need a moment with him, Ms. Arbery? Yeah. No, we're ready. Mr. Brown, 20MM1489. Okay. And it was an adjudication, is that right? Okay. And Your Honor, can I just confirm the plea? I wasn't able to hear Ms. Arm Brewster. Um, she said it was an adjudication of guilt, 90 days in the Collier County Jail, credit for all time served, uh, court costs and all applicable prosecution and public defender uh, fees and costs. I believe there was also cost of investigation of $321. I just want to confirm that. Okay, is that to CCSO? Yes. How much, how much was it? 300 and what? $321 even. 321, okay. All right. Sir, will you still please uh, state your name and date of birth for the record? I think we need to have you a little closer to the microphone because I can't hear you very well. Thank you, sir. And sir, you've been charged. Pardon me? Thank you. You've been charged with resisting or obstructing an officer without violence. Do you understand the maximum time that you could serve in jail on that is when you're in the county jail? And knowing that, how do you wish to plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Have you uh, read and signed a plea form? Do you understand all the rights that you're gonna be giving by, by giving up by entering into this plea? Are you entering into this plea because you believe it is in your best interest? Has anybody threatened you in any way or made you any promises to cause you to enter into this plea? And you've been re represented by Ms. Armpriester. Are you satisfied with her advice in this case? And do you understand everything that you're doing today? Do you have any questions for me or for Ms. Armpriester before we proceed forward? Are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to enter into this plea? Do you suffer from any mental illnesses? Do you understand that if you're not a United States citizen that this charge could be used against you in a deportation proceeding? Anything else I need to ask him, Mr. Rob? No, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Armpriester. Mr. you stipulate to a factual basis and venue for the purpose of the plea? Yes, sir. All right, sir, so the court will accept your plea, find that it's freely, voluntarily, knowingly, and intelligently made, that there is a factual basis for your plea and venue in Collier County. To the charge of resisting or obstructing an officer without violence, the court will adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 90 days in the Collier County Jail, with credit for all time served, and you will pay the court costs, the cost of prosecution, and all applicable public defender fees. In addition, the court is ordering you to pay restitution payable to the Collier County Sheriff's Office, in the amount of $321, okay? Thank you. 
And that looks good. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. All right, good. Thank you, Mr. Rev. Have a good day today. Absolutely, Your Honor. You too. Thank you. All right, we'll see you later.